GT500 meets a lot of people's needs for both horsepower and a show car. Yep, we need an accelerator. What's going on guys? So we are headed over to meet up with Justin of VMP Performance and he has a, I believe it's a 2011 or 2012 GT500. As you guys know, I have been considering uh, purchasing a GT500 if the Cobra sells and I have been pretty stuck on a 13 or 14 GT500. But he said, hey, you know what? Come check out my uh, 12 GT500 um, to see if that would be an option for you know me. Um, not that I would buy this specific car, um, um, but the build I would be doing on the car would be very similar and that being a blower upgrade and basically going for some uh, some good power. So we're gonna head over there, go check out the car and see if this would possibly satisfy me over a 1314. As you guys know, the 1314 I mainly want for the quad tip, the better tail lights, the better display, the better interior. Um, so uh, the five the 5.8 liter factor of it is a cool thing, um, but the 5.4 is actually a really, really strong motor. So we'll get Justin's opinion on that as well, since he's tuned a million of these things, um, pretty much since they came out um, and they first started making supercharger kits uh, upgrades for these GT500s. So we're gonna head over there and we'll see you guys when we get there. Got some sound. It does all right. Yeah, we need that AC. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we're here with Justin Starkey of VMP Performance. Hey, everybody. And we are in a, is it 2011 or 2012? 2012 GT500. I bought this car a year ago with 82,000 miles to do R&D. And it's the first used Shelby I've ever built. So it was pre-loved as evident by the t-shirt over the seat here. <laughs> It's a track pack car, which means it's got 373 gears. It's got narrow stripes. Which, what do you think about the narrow stripes, Andrew? I honestly never even knew there was a difference. Performance pack gets narrow stripes? Yeah. Huh. And like, I think it's a different wheel and tire package. It's a different... Yeah, they definitely get the better wheels. Yeah, different like struts and sway bars. But it doesn't change the amount of power the car makes. It doesn't really add a whole lot of significant content. So as you guys know, I am on the search for a GT500 if my 03 Cobra sells. And I have been trying to decide between an 11 or 12 GT500 and a 1314 GT500. Justin here has had both. He's tuned a million of them. So we headed over to Justin and we're checking out this one. I would consider myself, uh, yeah, I've, I've had a lot of them, an 07. <laughs> back in 2007 when they first came out, a 13 back in 12 when they first came out, and then like this is my first in-between car. It's, uh, they're, they're awesome machines and it will definitely be a good upgrade over your 03 Cobra. I mean, typically these with what, a blower upgrade can make like 700 wheel horsepower on 93 octane? Easily! Yeah. Very, very easily. I mean, my Cobra is on 22 pounds of boost, E85, and it makes 709. I mean, which which is fun, but I mean, put it on 93 and it's just... It's like every other Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> what you were saying is if you get a GT500, it's got to make more power than your car right now. Oh, absolutely. On pump gas. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's going to be hard. I don't think so but either. But first, Andrew, we got to find what GT500 you're going to get. you got to decide. Got to figure out if it's an 11 or 12 or 1314. And now this one has the 5.4 liter. Comes factory with what? Knock sensors, AFR readings on both banks. Um, this is kind of the first, you know, the 11 was the first year of a GT500 with technology. Yeah, I got a lot of the same technology as the five liter, like you were saying, the wide bands and knock sensors, which makes them easier to tune, but I've been tuning them since 2007, so. I don't think we should give the 07 to 10s too much of a bad name. Very true. It definitely makes remote tuning easier though, to have 
wide bands. Now, one of the main differences between an 11 or 12, or actually really an 07 to 12, and a 1314 is the 1314 comes with the 2.3 liter TBS, while 07 to 12 come with the little M122 blower. M122. Yep. It's just so, a step above the stock blower on your Cobra. Yeah. But we have the equalizer on this car. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's pretty much more than the equalizer now. It's the Terminator. <laughs> if we want to reference another. Yeah, we got a Gen 3 on this car. Yeah, so 2.65 liter TBS on this car. And what, long tubes? Long tube headers. Yeah. And this one runs on 93. It uh, makes about 750 to 800 wheel, depending on how <laughs> high it's turned up and oh, man. you're gonna get a chance to experience that in a, in a little while oh yeah but we gotta we gotta put some fresh gas in it first yep. One big difference in this is this has 373 gears and the regular gear TR6060, while the 1314 gets the really long gears and 331s in the rear end. Yeah, and you can actually do 60 miles an hour in first gear in the 1314. <laughs> I experienced that the other day. I was going about 40 miles an hour at like, I don't know, like 3,000 RPM or something like that. It was like crazy in first gear. I so a lot of people like they think oh that's you know that's silly why the gear's so long but I actually like it because if you add a bunch of horsepower the car hooks up so much easier. Yeah, well that's what I noticed with that car the other day. While that car was pretty beat and had some weird things <laughs> going on, random misfire codes and the clutch was really bad on it. Um, I could get a feel for that type of car and the the transmission and the gearing. Um, uh, although that 4.0 Whipple was not doing anything on the car. I'm pretty sure it was making less power with the 4.0 Whipple than the stock blower. We saw that a lot with the 1314s. The 2.3 TBS that came factory on them was so good and it was so torquey yeah. that I I would have I would have not. Well, I had one and I did not put a uh, I put one of a VMP 2.3 TBS on it, a Gen 2R, but uh, I didn't put anything else on it because I just didn't think there was a big benefit. Yeah. Until you talk about a 2.65, which is pretty much the same TVS technology with more displacement. And more efficiency. So it just, uh, it's the natural evolution to the technology. And you get the same benefits of it being torquey and clearing the hood. By the way, what hood did that four liter car have on it? They must have had drop motor mounts and yeah, uh, yeah. It, it fit under it. Yeah. Yeah, so our Gen 3 is a really nice upgrade to the 2.3 liter. And it's just more efficiency, more displacement, more boost, more power. And what's nice about our Gen 3 is even on pump gas, you still make more power because it's so much more efficient. Sorry everybody, I'm only a part-time manual driver. <laughs> These have factory twin disc clutches, right? Yes, and that was the first thing we did when we got this car. We had a used RXT laying around. Oh, okay. And we threw out that factory clutch and put the RXT in. Just because that is the one weakness of these cars is the organic clutch burns up so easy. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, if my car doesn't sell the way it is, which it, it might not, I'll probably take in the clutch out and then I think I can send it out to Mantic and redo have them redo the uh, you know new disc and I think the 26 spline input shaft is still the same, right? Yeah, these got a 26 spline input on the 6060 factory. So I believe I can use the same clutch out of my Cobra. Um, I'll just rebuild it and put it in the GT500. This car is all about budget, hence the mileage and what I paid for it and everything else. Yeah. But if if I was not on a budget with this project, because we have a bunch of projects at VMP, it would most definitely get a Mantic clutch. Yeah. It would get a triple disc Mantic, it would hold all the power in the world, it would drive great, and it would last a long time too, I believe. Yeah, I've been, I really like the Mantic clutch in my Cobra, um, driving around. Although I really haven't put that many miles on, since I turned my car, put E85 on it, I haven't gone back but I haven't really driven it as much because it's on E85 and it's such a pain in the butt. Where do you go to get E85 for your Cobra? Daytona. 
<laughs> so if I drive the car to work, which isn't very often, I'll fill up there and fill up a few, you know, extra tanks of it. But it's it's a pain in the butt, and I haven't switched over to pump gas because we're literally talking about 100 wheel horsepower less. And I mean, I don't know. I think this new car, this GT500, that you're gonna get, we're gonna keep it on pump gas. You're yeah. gonna drive it more. I, I think so too. I mean. I, I want to be able to have the option, but then again, like, once I went to E85 on the Cobra, I drove the car so much less. Like, I think it's gone on a thousand miles since I've gone with the E85. And, like, I mean, I can't blame you for doing it on the Cobra, because you needed it to make the power to yeah. compete with the 5 liter and even the 5.4. But once you go to a bigger displacement engine, because, like, this is... This engine overall, it's more displacement, it's a better cylinder head, it's still the same basic architecture as your 4.6 Cobra, but it's just better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's really what it is. Every, every stock bottom end Cobra, they all make very similar power, no matter which blower you put on it. That's Kenny Bell, Whipple, VMP. On the stock bottom end, you typically see what, a 750, maybe 800 wheel with some head work on a stock bottom end. Yeah, and I mean, I actually, I recently had a, a chance to test a, a bunch of different blowers on an 03 Cobra, and they, they all made similar power when turned up. Um, maybe one day we'll release those test results, maybe one day we won't, but. And that's nothing against the 4.6 four valve platform, it's really just the stock bottom end being such low compression, and I mean, it just, it just has its limits. The heads weren't as good, like even the intercooler under the blower isn't as big, it's just everything's smaller on that 4.6 engine. Yeah. And that and the heat exchanger up front is just a little little baby little strip. While <laughs> the GT500, you have all that space for one, the factory one, and then two, an upgraded one like you guys have. Yeah, and if you get one of these cars, upgrading the heat exchanger is paramount. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my car, it's like, if I'm driving around in Florida summer, it's at 140 degrees downstream air temperature, which if you do a pull on that, I mean, one, it's already pulling timing, and two, it's not really that safe, right? <laughs> Talking no. to a tuner here. No, it's, we want to see those downstreams as cool as possible. Yeah. Preferably about 120 is a good number to stay around. Yeah. Now the 5.4 got pretty much the same heads as the 4GT, is that right? Yes. That's one of those big technology improvements that spilled over into the GT500 program. That's why the internet was very mad when uh, Kalidus put some head gasket <laughs> sealer through the, oh, the engine and <laughs> they were not happy with him. <laughs> Kalidus, we love you, but you're a little bit hard on stuff. <laughs> Man, he's had that habit of breaking everything, which that happened to me for a while. I was breaking every car that I went out and everyone was commenting on my videos like Andrew breaks everything <laughs> and I'm like I, I don't know it just keeps happening but I haven't had too bad of a streak lately the bullet's been good somehow on everything being bone stock rear end stock 3650 transmission and a stock two valve the stock axle back on this stock axle back with Dynatech long tubes boost is this on? This is about 20 pounds. Okay. <laughs> All right, we are now behind the wheel of the GT500. Yeah, that GT500 I drove the other day had a um, really weird clutch, which I think it was just a really worn out factory clutch. And it, it was kind of like a uh, it felt like it was a cable clutch and it felt like there was like dirt in the cable, but obviously it's not a cable clutch, but that's what it felt like. That's really bad. Yeah, there was just so much going on with that car and I was just like, this is weird. get up and go in second gear yeah put a smile on your face Andrew yeah I mean pump gas I, my Cobra and pump gas I had it on that setup for like over a year and I was just so used to it and 600 wheel horsepower to me it does not feel like it did 
one I drove a two valve around <laughs> every day. They drive nice. I, like, it feels nice. It feels like a, I mean, this one's an 80,000 mile car, but it, this feels like a, a much newer car than my Cobra. Um, and I need to have a nice car to drive around, occasionally drag race, and occasionally have some fun on the streets. I think a GT500 will do that just fine for you. Oh, the advanced track is still on. <laughs> Yes, that was for my protection, Andrew. <laughs> Customers. Did it do something weird? Yeah. Does it have any lights or anything on it? Did we break the belt? No, that's it. Maybe it's traction control? Yeah, I don't know. Is it in gear right now? Yeah, it's got a nice, you know, aggressive sound. Not too loud when you're cruising, just loud when you get on it with the long tubes and the yeah. factory cap back. I mean, I don't think it's for me because you know me and every one of my cars, it's gonna be very loud. You gotta have it loud. <laughs> every car has gotta be loud. I actually consider my Cobra kind of quiet. <laughs> Your, yeah, Ashley's car is really loud. That is, that is very loud. That is actually like, pretty much the loudest exhaust setup you can do, especially with a boosted car. It, pff, silly loud. It will get you arrested. <laughs> oh man. How's that going by the way? It's it's another six to eight months for the jury trial to assemble. It's crazy. Ashley's going to trial. Yeah, because um, we have a lawyer fighting it and he basically said that the way the judge and the officer were talking, he, he changed his story and the, the judge was nodding his head with the officer. So basically, they could have decided it right then and there, but it probably would have been guilty, uh, which means, <laughs> it's 550. Um, <laughs> Which means basically, you know, we don't get the $500 bail money back, and then she also has a technically a criminal charge on her record. So he decided to go for a jury trial, which takes a very long time in Myrtle Beach, being a small beach town. I get the comments, they're like, wow, how do you make it from Mexico to Florida so quick? Oh man. The boat. The boat. The boat. <laughs> There's a special high-speed boat to take racers from Florida to Mexico. Like third year. Now, do you rev this out to seven or 65? 65. 65. Now the 1314s go out to seven, right? They do. Oh, that's, that's gonna be a big selling point for me. I like RPM. Now what's the what's the difference that why they don't rev out more? So this car came with a 6250 rev limiter stock, much like your Cobra did. Ford, as part of doing zero to 60 in first gear, they decided to up the rev limiter on the 1314s to seven, and they supposedly made a small change to the connecting rod to handle that. In reality, it was such a small change, we could probably rev this engine to seven. We just don't for safety reasons, but we probably could. Second gear. <laughs> I do not think traction control likes you, Andrew. About to end that problem. I don't think we can turn it off while we're moving. Really? Yeah, we have to, here you can, or just click it once. A popo on the left. I see that. <laughs> Federales. <laughs> Holding on. <laughs> we stopped by the ranch out here in Mexico. Right by Mexico, right? <laughs> oh, I see Chucky over there. We had some fun in Chucky. You did, you did. That video will be out soon. Yes. See if we can scare Justin. Oh, you didn't get 
get scared. <laughs> I just kind of held on. These tires actually are hooking up, surprisingly. It helps that it's warm outside. When you get your GT500, Andrew? Well, Cobra Cells. I think, now this, this right here is gonna feel very similar to the 1314. I do a few things to it. Power-wise, I think I'm decided on the car, but I think I'm still leaning towards the 1314. And mostly that's about the cosmetic things and the, you know, you got the display in the middle, you got the quad tips. Um, you can you can tell people that you have a 5.8 liter. <laughs> Bigger's better. Bigger is better, right? That's <laughs> what all the LS guys say. <laughs> I don't know, Andrew. I think given that the Cobra may not sell for as much as you want it to, and the 5.4 is such a good value, I really think you should get an 11.12. It's possible. I mean, the, the really the question is, um, since I'm not going to take a significant amount of money out of savings to buy the car, really it is, do I buy an 11 or 12 cash and not have a loan on it, or have a small loan on a 13.14? You know, you can do uh, 13, 14 taillights on 11, 12. Yes, that you can do. And quad tips. And quad tips. Andrew, I just I just gotta say, don't be a GT500 snob, just get an 11, 12. You know what, it, it, I mean, I'm gonna go get a GT500, I get a fold out chair, I'm gonna get a dyno sheet that says a lot of horsepower, and then it's just gonna go to car shows and say, yeah, I got on it once. We'll get you one of those big, <laughs> big like frames. Big deals. frames, yeah. big stand, um, always sunscreen in the car, ready to go. <laughs> Andrew, these are a lot of our customers. We can't make fun of them. <laughs> well, I guess that, that really, like, the GT500 meets a lot of people's needs for both horsepower and a show car. Yep, we need an accelerator. Get back up to the speed limit. That's all we did. And Mexico. <laughs> so if you do a GT500, you, well, when you get a GT500, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do to it? Everything. Everything. We're talking long tubes, and in a very quick time span, we're talking long tubes, blower, obviously tune, and cams. That is like my main goals. Supporting mods, good tuning. So You'll have a 800, 850 wheel monster. Yeah. The camps is really, cause, oh, that's, that's gonna be awesome. Hopefully least, you'll go with a VMP Gen 3. Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy. I mean, it's, you put it on, put a fuel pump booster on and injectors and cold air intake, right? Besides the clutch. 700 wheel horsepower on 93, pretty much every time. Yeah. Just to start with. Just to start with. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the fuel system in these cars is a lot better in your 0304 Cobra, so we will not have to upgrade it right away. Yeah. Yeah, make a fair pass. <laughs> in, the, in the left lane. <laughs> The internet sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is rough on sellers of custom vehicles. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, whenever I sell a vehicle, it's not because I have to sell it, it's because I'm trying to get something else. So, I am trying to get the most amount of money out of the vehicle because I don't need to sell it. It, it can sit for a while, it can wait. I can't you know? blame you. I mean, somebody wants a turnkey car. 700 wheel already figured out and everything else that's it so i think that concludes the video talked about a lot of different things 11 or 12s 13 14s 03 cobras we went to mexico a few times and you hopefully got to uh got to hopefully this helps you decide what kind of gt500 you're gonna get it's, it's gonna be interesting. Um, I mean, this pretty much confirms what I want, because like I said, I've driven a lot of boosted Coyotes, all different applications, and while I really like them, I just think that this car has something special about it. And I already have a boosted Coyote, and a truck Coyote. <laughs> so, 
we just need to do something a little different and this is like the bigger badder terminator cobra pretty much yeah and that and you know long tubes blower cams vmp gen 3 blower just <laughs> yep. gonna put that plug in there right there I, it's just the easiest setup i mean that's makes a bunch of power and it's simple you just bolt it on i mean you do blower swaps in like 30 minutes 30 minutes <laughs> if i have all the tools <laughs> out so make sure you slap the like button down below i hope you guys are excited uh for what is to come uh leave a comment let us know what you think uh check out vmp's youtube channel justin appears on there very often and there'll be a little link up there and look forward to i guess the gt500 build um so yeah when you buy one it's gonna happen very soon <laughs> um don't know if the Cobra's gonna sell the way it is or not, but we'll see.